The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, crunch, crunch. His feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. He walked with his toes pointing in like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick, a stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough just yet. So he made a smiling snowman, and he made angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great, big, tall, heaping mountain of snow and slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow, and another, and still another. He packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and thought and thought about them. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere. New snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. The end. A Letter to Amy by Ezra Jack Keats. I'm writing a letter to Amy. I'm inviting her to my party, Peter announced. Well, why don't you just ask her? You didn't write to anyone else, said his mother. Peter stared at the sheet of paper for a while and said, Well, this way it's sort of special. He folded the letter quite a few times, put it in the envelope, and sealed it. Now I'll mail it, he said. Well, what did you write? his mother asked. Will you please come to my birthday party, Peter? Well, you should tell her when to come. So he wrote on the back of the envelope, It's this Saturday at 2. Now mail it. Put on a stamp. He did and started to leave. Wear your raincoat. It looks like rain. He put it on and said, It looks like rain. You'd better stay in, Willie. And ran out to mail his letter. Walking to the mailbox, Peter looked at the sky. Dark clouds raced across it like wild horses. He glanced up at Amy's window. She wasn't there. Only Pepe, her parrot, was sat peering down. Willie, didn't I tell you to stay home? Peter thought, what will the boys say when they see a girl at my party? Suddenly there was a flash of lightning and a roar of thunder. A strong wind blew the letter out of his hand. Peter chased the letter. He tried to stop it with his foot, but it blew away. Then it flew high into the air and landed, skipping across a hopscotch game. The letter blew this way and that. Peter chased it this way and that. He couldn't catch it. Big drops of rain began to fall. Just then, someone turned the corner. It was Amy. She waved to him. The letter flew right toward her. She mustn't see it or the surprise will be spoiled. They both ran for the letter. In his great hurry, Peter bumped into Amy. He caught the letter before she could see it was for her.
Quickly, he stuffed the letter into the mailbox. He looked for Amy, but she had run off crying. Now she'll never come to my party, thought Peter. He saw his reflection in the street. It looked all mixed up. When Peter got back to his house, his mother asked, Did you mail your letter? Yes, he said sadly. Saturday came at last. Everybody arrived but Amy. Shall I bring the cake out now? His mother asked Peter. Let's wait a little, said Peter. Now, bring it out now, chanted the boys. All right, said Peter slowly. Bring it out now. Just then, the door opened, and in walked Amy with her parrot. A girl, ugh, said Eddie. Happy birthday, Peter, said Amy. Happy birthday, Peter, repeated the parrot. Peter's mother brought in the cake she had baked and lit the candles. Everyone sang. Make a wish, cried Amy. Wish for a truck full of ice cream, shouted Eddie. A store full of candy and no stomach ache. But Peter made his own wish and blew out the candles all at once. The end. Peter's Chair by Ezra Jack Keats. Peter stretched as high as he could. There, his tall building was finished. Crash! Down it came. Shh! called his mother. You'll have to play more quietly. Remember, we have a new baby in the house. Peter looked into his sister Susie's room. His mother was fussing around the cradle. That's my cradle, he thought. And they painted it pink. Well, hi, Peter, said his father. Would you like to help me paint sister's high chair? It's my high chair, whispered Peter. He saw his crib and muttered, my crib, it's painted pink too. Not far away stood his old chair. They didn't paint that yet, Peter shouted. He picked it up and ran to his room. They went outside and stood in front of his house. This is a good place, said Peter. He arranged his things very nicely and decided to sit in his chair for a while. His mother came to the window and called, Won't you come back to us, Peter, dear? We have something very special for lunch. Peter and Willie made believe they didn't hear, but Peter got an idea. Soon his mother saw signs that Peter was home. That rascal is hiding behind the curtain, she said happily. She moved the curtain away, but he wasn't there. Here I am, shouted Peter. Peter sat in a grown-up chair. His father sat next to him. Daddy, said Peter, let's paint the little chair pink for Susie. And they did. The end. Whistle for Willie by Ezra Jack Keats. Oh, how Peter wished he could whistle. He saw a boy playing with his dog. Whenever the boy whistled, the dog ran straight to him. Peter tried and tried to whistle, but he couldn't. So instead, he began to turn himself around, and around and around he whirled faster and faster. When he stopped, everything, everything turned down and up and up and down and around and around. Peter saw his dog, Willie, coming. Quick as a wink, he hid in an empty carton laying on the sidewalk. Wouldn't it be funny if I whistled, Peter thought. Willie would stop and look all around to see who it was. Peter tried again to whistle, but still he couldn't. So Willie just walked on. Peter got out of the carton and started home. 
On the way, he took some colored chalks out of his pocket and drew a long, long line. Right up to his door, he stood there and tried to whistle again. He blew till his cheeks were tired, but nothing happened. He went into his house and put on his father's old hat to make himself feel more grown up. He looked into the mirror to practice whistling. Still, no whistle. When his mother saw what he was doing, Peter pretended that he was his father. He said, I've come home early today, dear. Is Peter here? His mother answered, why no, he's outside with Willie. Well, I'll go out and look for them, said Peter. First he walked along a crack in the sidewalk. Then he tried to run away from his own shadow. He jumped off his shadow, but when he landed, they were together again. He came to the corner where the carton was, and who should he see but Willie? Peter scrambled under the carton. He blew and blew and blew. Suddenly, out came a real whistle. Willie stopped and looked around to see who it was. It's me, Peter shouted and stood up. Willie raced straight to him. Peter ran home to show his father and mother what he could do. They loved Peter's whistling, and so did Willie. Peter's mother asked him and Willie to go on an errand to the grocery store. He whistled all the way there, and he whistled all the way home. The end.